Good evening, everyone. Glad to have all those who are present be here this evening and hope you had a good afternoon. Remind everyone uh, of our Wednesday evening Bible study at 730. Please make efforts to be here. And uh, we also want you to remember our uh, Bible study on uh, Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. Uh, on our sick list, uh, well, it's actually not a sick list exactly. Some of it is. Uh, Greg Ward is not here this evening due to a, a problem at his home with a water leak. So uh, he's having to attend to that uh, emergency. Uh, we mentioned uh, Macon uh, Ward getting... Uh, better and uh, hope to be uh, going uh, back to her normal uh, location soon. Um, don't know of anyone out of town at the moment. Uh, the, uh, the Metcalfs are out of town. Thank you. Um, there are two gospel meetings uh, in the area, one starting tomorrow. Uh, at Pekin, May 29th uh, through June 2nd, and uh, Westside in Salem starts June the 12th through the 16th. Uh, remember uh, our theme for the year, Courageous Christians, and uh, read those pa the passage uh, referenced uh, for this month uh, for concentration, Matthew 26. Uh, let's uh, make sure we've read that and uh, concentrated on that. And then uh, next week we'll be getting uh, concentration on uh, the courage of Paul. So uh, be prepared for that. Uh, remember to utilize our website. If you have not signed up for our website uh, to have the uh, member access, uh, you can do so. Uh, by uh, contacting uh, Brother Nail. And uh, actually, I think you can sign up for it, uh, make a request on on the website. Uh, but if you have any trouble with that, uh, Brother Nail will be able to help you with that. Uh, that website is ClarksvilleChurchOfChrist.org. The Wednesday program is currently available for the men uh, in the foyer. And uh, the uh, Sunday program will be uh, available uh, Wednesday evening. So be sure to look at that or pick one up so that you know uh, what your assignments are. Uh, this evening, uh, Brother Steve Nail will be bringing, uh, leading us in song. Brother Jody Stuffel will have our reading. Uh, that text will be Daniel 3, 8 through 18. Daniel 3, 8 through 18. And uh, Jeff Hunt will have our opening prayer. Uh, I will uh, lead our minds around the Lord's table. And uh, Brother Joshua Hobb bring this evening's lesson. Let's turn to number 76 in the big book tonight. 76, closer to thee. Thank you. Closer to thee.
174 before the reading of prayer. Number 174. <coughs> Therefore, at that time, oh, this is uh, um, Daniel 3, starting in verse 8. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and malicely accused the Jews. They declared to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the burning, fiery furnace. There, there are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you and do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in 
furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve the serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music to fall down and worship the image that I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into the burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will be able to deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, O king, Said, said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or the or." The, Worship the golden image that you have set up. Please stand for the prayer. Father in heaven, we come to you this evening giving thanks for this Lord's Day you've given us and this opportunity we have now to spend time in your house worshiping you. We pray that the things we say and do here are in accordance to your will and will be pleasing to you and that each of us will gain from the time we spend together singing these songs, reading your word, offering prayers and hearing your word proclaimed. Thank you for that freedom and the abilities that we have to be here tonight. We pray to be with Josh tonight as he stands before us and presents a lesson from your word. Help him have a remembrance of those things which he's prepared and speak them in a way that each of us can clearly understand. Thank you for his willingness and ability to do this. Father, we pray for the church here at Clarksville. You know our needs, and we just pray your blessings upon us. Help us, guide us, and direct us here. Be with Alan and Steve as they uh, lead us here. Have them help them to have the, the abilities and the knowledge and understanding of the things that we need and, and the willingness and able to lead us. And we as as members here to follow uh, their thoughts and, and help and encourage them in any way that we can. Father, we are mindful tonight of those of our number here and others that each of us know at this time who are struggling with a variety of issues in their life, some of it being health, and we pray for those. Pray that if it be thy will, they could get better. We pray that the uh, treatments or medications or surgeries or uh, whatever they're having uh, to help them that will be effective and they can get them onto the road to recovery. And we pray for their families and others who are encouraging them and helping them, help them stay strong in the face of adversity. Father, there's others that we know of who are um, have problems in their life and, and maybe have wandered away from your church and we just pray for them and Pray if it's thy will that something could be said or done, that we could encourage them and help them bring them back here to us once again. Thank you for Christ and his willingness to go to the cross, to die there, and through those actions, and we have the ability for a forgiveness of sins and pray that we utilize that ability and we strive to um, do better each day in our lives. Thank you for the church which has been established and for the church here at Clarksville. And we just pray uh, your blessings upon the work of the church here and, and throughout the world. Father, we're uh, mindful of so many difficult situations throughout the world where others might not have the freedoms that we have to worship you openly. And we just pray for them and pray that they can remain strong and steadfast and, and their desire to worship you and learn more about you. And we just pray uh, for their safety and, and that they can indeed um, worship you. We ask now, Father, for forgiveness of our sins. And we pray for the strength and the ability to 
overcome any weakness that we have, to put up a shield, to guard off anything that Satan throws at us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Here to mark your song books at number 270 will be our song after tonight's lesson. 270 will be the invitation song. So when all my labors and trials are over, and I am safe on that beautiful shore, just to be near the dear Lord I adore, will fill the ages be glory for me. Good evening. It's great to be out with you all again tonight. So good to see you all and to spend today uh, looking into God's Word. Tonight we're going to be in Daniel chapter 3. That's what we'll be looking at. Um, this morning we looked at Mark chapter 12, a portion of that, that chapter. And that's a chapter I just recently looked at in some of my daily reading. And this is another chapter from a daily reading I've been doing. I just went through the book of Daniel. It's a great read. I highly recommend going through Daniel. Uh, there's a lot of great things to think about. And so this is kind of fresh on my mind, Daniel chapter 3. I want us to begin by thinking about the theme of the book of Daniel. Now, one of the big themes I see in the beginning chapters is this idea of serving God in unfavorable circumstances. In chapter 1, Daniel and his three friends are taken to Babylon. They are taken to a place far away from home 
they're put into the king's personal servant servanthood and they are you know tasked with becoming babylonians nebuchadnezzar is trying to essentially brainwash them in becoming babylonians so daniel in chapter one stands up and says i will not eat unclean meat and so he is tested and with his three friends by giving vegetables and they come out looking far better than those who ate the meat chapter two Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And so he has uh, these wise men come in and he wants them to tell him the interpretation of the dream. But he won't tell them what the dream is. And so, of course, they're like, well, we can't do that. So he has them all killed. Well, Daniel stands up and says, the Lord will tell me the dream. and The Lord will give me the interpretation. And so Daniel tells him <coughs> the dream and its interpretation. And what I really like is before he even tells him the dream in chapter two, he says, the Lord most high will tell me. I really like that. And then in chapter three, which we're going to be looking at tonight is this idea of stand in adversity, stand against sin. And as we begin, I want us to think about this passage from first Peter chapter two. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 says, But if you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it. This finds favor with God. So I want this passage to kind of be the premise of our study of Daniel chapter 3. So in chapter 2, Daniel has just told Nebuchadnezzar the interpretation of the great statue. You remember that story? The head of gold is Babylon. And the chest is Greece and the legs or excuse me, the chest is the Medes, and the Persians, the legs are Greece, the shoes are the, are the Romans. And there's this rock that comes from this mountain that crushes the statue and establishes a new kingdom. This idea of Christ is coming. He's going to establish his kingdom. that's going to uh, last way longer than the statue, than these worldly kingdoms. At the end of chapter two and verse 49, it says, And Daniel may request of the king. Now, the king has just uh, pretty much promoted Daniel. Daniel is being blessed by the king. And Daniel says, appoint my three friends over the administration of the province of Babylon. And that's what the king does here in uh, verse 49. And Daniel may request of the king. And he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the administration of the province of Babylon. While Daniel was in the king's court. And I want us to remember this because it comes up here in chapter 3. So let's begin reading. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. It reads, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, the height of which was 60 cubits, and it's with 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. The Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent word to assemble the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the, uh, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the rulers of the provinces were assembled for the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, To you the command is given, O peoples, O nations, and men of every language, that the moment you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, uh, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast in the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, nations, and men of every language fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. For this reason, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and and brought charges against the Jews. They responded and said said to Nebuchadnezzar the king, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man 
who hears the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, and psaltery, and bagpipe, and all kinds of music, is to fall down and worship the golden image. But whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the province of Babylon, namely Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have disregarded you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. So Nebuchadnezzar begins by building this statue that's 60 cubits tall and six cubits wide. And if you kind of convert that to our measurements, that's 60 feet high with nine or nine, 90 feet high, nine feet long. It's a massive statue. And Nebuchadnezzar, what he does is he calls these kind of leading men of his, of his country, of his nation. And he brings them all together because he wants them all to fall down before his great statue. And so the command that the herald gives in verse 4 is to bow down and worship when you hear the sound of the instruments. And the consequence is you're going to die by being burned in this fiery furnace. And so all the people, when they heard the sound, fell down. All except three pesky Jews. And so some Chaldeans, they saw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't fall down. So they go to the king. King, you see these guys, they didn't fall down. Very few people do what is right. Three out of how many people? We don't know. I speculate. 40, 50, 60. All the peoples, probably more. There's people from the nation there as well, besides the leading men. Three people. Are we going to stand up and do what's right in the world full of people who will fall down? and worship an idol. It doesn't have to be a statue. What are the things people worship today? And so verse 13, the Nebuchadnezzar in rage and anger gave orders to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar is furious. These three men that he just appointed over the province of Babylon, won't fall down and worship his idol. And so Nebuchadnezzar responded in verse 14 and said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, and bagpipe, and all kinds of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made very well. But if you do not worship, you will immediately be cast into the midst of the fire of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar is furious. And maybe there's a couple different reasons why he's furious. These are leading men of the nation over the province of Babylon. And what are the people going to think when they see these leading men disobeying the king's orders? Well, they don't have to. Maybe we don't have to either. And so these leading men may be the cause of a great rebellion against the uh, rule of Nebuchadnezzar. Another reason, these are outstanding men that he pulled from Judah specifically because of their abilities and their talents as young men. He has spent time, he has spent his servant's time 
trying to get these men to become Babylonians so he can use them for his own purposes and his personal service. And these are men that he knows. Daniel, he knows very well. And they're refusing to obey him. And of course, they simply just rebelled against his orders. And he's furious with them for that. Let's ask ourselves this question. Should we obey worldly authorities? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't. Should I? I want you to think about this passage from Acts chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than man. Should we obey authorities? The truth is yes. But what does Peter point out? Who's our ultimate authority? Who's our ultimate loyalty to? It's to the Lord. And so, yes, Peter in 1 Peter says, honor the king. We're to submit to the rulers of this world. But when they say, bow down to our idol, or when they say, do what the Lord has not said to do, O Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow down. So yes, we should obey. We serve the Lord foremost of all. You know, sin gives us second chances. Isn't that what Nebuchadnezzar does? In verse 15, now if you are ready at this moment, you know, we like to think God gives us second chances, and of course he does. God's a very merciful God. We know Satan loves to give us second chances too. And third and fourth and fifth. We just got to keep resisting. Don't give in. The world likes to intimidate us and bully us and try to get us to serve it. While Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego put their trust in the Lord. You know, I've been thinking about this idea of trusting in the Lord. And I've started to realize that it's easy to say, but it's so hard to do. So what are you, you going to do when you and your friends have to go before the king in front of everybody? And the king's angry with you. He's the ruler of the world. And he says, if you're not, you're going to die. Well, I say I trust in the Lord when things are easy. What's going to happen when I'm against the rulers of this world. What's going to happen when I'm in that stressful situation? Am I really going to trust in the Lord? Or will I trust in my own might? Three had no idea what God was going to do. Now they say, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire in verse 17, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. They have faith. They believe God's going to deliver us. But even if he does not, do we have that kind of faith and that kind of trust? That we believe, yes, he's going to deliver us. He's going to protect us. He's going to help us. But even if he doesn't, we're not going to give in. You know, we like to try and predict what God's going to do for us. You know, in my certain situation, you know, I'm praying. And so, you know, I want God to kind of do this. And so I, yeah, I think God's going to do this because I think this is the best way of going about it. And so, of course, God's going to listen to me. Or, of course, God's going to do what I think he's going to do. But you can't predict what God's going to do. You ever been in that situation where you think God's going to do one thing, but then you look back and you're like, he did something way better than what I thought he was going to do. You think these three thought that God was going to let them stand in a blazing hot fiery furnace with one with the appearance like a son of the gods. We don't know what God's going to do. We just need to have faith and trust. And no matter if he saves us from the rulers or from the situations or not, we're not going to give in to sin. You just need to trust in him. How often do we get into those hard situations and instead of trusting, we say, I got this. And even if he does not, 
our service to God should not be based on our own personal protection. It needs to be based on our trust in the Lord. God's against sin. We need to stand up and say, O King, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. We're not going to give in to sin, no matter the cost. You know, not sinning has consequences. Do you know what I really love about these guys? In their response in verse 16 through 18, do you think they're like really scared of Nebuchadnezzar? Do you think they're like kind of shaking like, we're, we're not going to give in. We're not going to fall down. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, verse 16, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. They were at peace. God helps us. God doesn't. We believe he will, but even if he doesn't. You know, peace is a choice. We, uh, back back home in the high school class, we've been going over different Christian characteristics that we need to have. And one of them was peace a couple weeks ago. And I kind of realized as we were going through kind of examples of people that had peace in the Bible you start to realize that all of them chose to be at peace. The three chose to be at peace with the outcome because they trusted in God. Are we going to trust in the Lord? The three were determined that they're not going to bow down. You know what they could have done. They could have convinced themselves, and that's a typo, that they weren't really going to worship the idol. You know, we'll bow down, but... Really, we're just going to be praying to God the whole time. Or we'll act like we're kind of worshiping him. But really, we don't really mean it because, you know, it's just an idol. I mean, it's just it's just kind of a dumb statue. We're not really worshiping something. You think we try and fit in too much? We, try and, we just want to go with the crowd. We don't want to look like the oddball out because we're Christians, so we're just going to kind of We're going to go to that party, but we're not going to drink. Or we're going to go out with those friends, but we're not going to do the things that they're going to do. Because we like their approval. We like being around them. Because they make us feel validated. They make us feel better about ourselves or whatever. Or we're not going to be like them because we're Christians. The truth is we're never going to fit in. Because we're aliens and sojourners looking for a kingdom looking for a city where righteousness dwells. Verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with wrath, and his facial expression was altered towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He answered by giving orders to heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. He commanded certain valiant warriors who were in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in order to cast them into the furnace of blazing fire. Then these men were tied up, and their trousers, their coats, their caps, and their and their other clothes, and were cast into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. For this reason, because the king, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace had been made extremely hot, the flames of the fire slew those men who carried up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire, still tied up. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded and stood up in haste. He said to his high officials, Was it not three men we cast bound into the midst of the fire? They replied to the king, Certainly, O king. He said, Look, I see four men loosed and walking about in the midst of the fire without harm. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near the door of the furnace of blazing fire. He responded and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out. You servants of the Most High God, and come here. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out in the midst of the fire. The sachaps and prefects, the governors and the king's high officials, gathered around and saw in regard to these men that the fire had no effect on their bodies. Of these men, 
nor was the hair of their heads uh, singed, and their trousers, nor were their trousers damaged, nor had the smell of fire even come upon him. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have just given Nebuchadnezzar this strong resentment against his command to bow. And so he's filled with even more anger, even more wrath. And so he has them eat up that furnace seven times hotter. He's going to make sure no one's coming out. He's going to make sure that the fire does what he wants it to. And it's so hot that the valiant men who Nebuchadnezzar has take them into the furnace were killed. They didn't have to be in the furnace to die by the flames. That's how hot it was. But the three of them went in and were not killed. And Nebuchadnezzar even makes an observation that there was a fourth one in there, one like the son of the gods. So perhaps that's an allusion to Jesus being in the fire. And if that's the case, maybe you can think about the application that Jesus goes through the fire with us. And we can come out the other side, unsinged, unburned, untouched by the heat of Satan. But we don't really quite know who this fourth man is. Nebuchadnezzar even says in verse 28, who has sent his angel and delivered them, uh, delivered his servants. So there's kind of a question mark on who this fourth one is. I tend to probably think it's just Jesus himself. The faith of a few. The faith of a few can change even the heart and the attitude of a king as powerful as Nebuchadnezzar. You see what he said? You servants of the Most High God. And then he's going to say in verse 28, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who put their trust in him, violating the king's command, and yielded up their bodies so as to not serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that any people, nation, or tongue that speaks anything offensive against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their house is reduced to a rubbish rubbish heap, inasmuch as there is no other god who is able to deliver in this way. The king caused Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to prosper in the province of Babylon. Faith of three men caused a great king like Nebuchadnezzar to see the power of the Most High God. Do you think our faith can point other people to the Most High God? But how is our faith going to point other people to the Most High God? We don't trust if we don't show our faith. It's easy to say, I have faith. I'm a Christian. Well, I have trust in the Lord. If you're not going to show it, how will people know who the Most High God is? And so the three of them came out of the fire unscathed. And the other people saw, uh, other people, other people see when you put your trust in the Lord. Are we determined? Are we determined like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? We're going to serve Yahweh and Yahweh alone. And we're not going to give in to the pressures of this world. Because of a few, Nebuchadnezzar made a new decree. One that if you spoke out against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you will die and your possessions will be burned. New decree from a man who was not a servant of the Lord. Um, God made him a servant, but who was not faithful uh, his entire reign. He's a man who had to learn what it means to serve the Lord. So Nebuchadnezzar goes from verse 15. You remember what he said there at the end of verse 15? 
and what God is there who can deliver you out of my hands. To verse 29, saying, and as in as much as there's no other God who's able to deliver in this way. God shows himself in powerful ways. And our faith can lead other people to the Lord. It can change the way people see him. You just show your faith. Easy to say, but it's hard to do. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they believed God would, they hoped God would, but even if he did not. Sometimes we expect God to do what we want him to. God's on his own time. God, I really hope you like do this thing for me. But even if he does not, we're going to serve the Lord. There's great blessing and peace found in trusting in the Lord. You never know what God might do. You know, he might save you like this. He might do this. He may not act at all. He may deliver. He may cause this thing to come into your life. He may cause this thing to go out of your life. You just never know what he's going to do. He could deliver. He could not. But you have the trust and the faith. He's going to do it. What God does is not as important for us as our obedience to him. We just need to trust in the Lord. And if he delivers you out of situations that are hard, if he takes that painful thing away, awesome. That's great. What a blessing. But if he makes you endure, if he makes you struggle, because of your faith. Keep serving the Lord. Who do we put our trust in? We say God, but do we really trust in the Lord? There's great peace found in God. When we decide that we're going to serve the Lord, we can stand like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and say, you know what? We're not going to give in, King. And we're at peace with our decision to serve the Lord. Then the king caused Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to prosper the province of Babylon. When you trust in the Lord, he will and he can bless you greatly. A concluding passage, 1 uh, 1 Peter 2, verse 20. But if you do what is right, And suffer for it. You patiently endure it. This finds favor with God. Will you patiently endure suffering for what is right? And if you do, the Lord will show favor and kindness towards you. If there's anyone here who needs prayers, anyone here who needs to... uh, confess sins, or if you need to become a Christian yourself, won't you do so? Won't you let us help you together as we come and as we stand, as we sing? Give me thy heart, says the Savior, and be mine. All lives are precious to me.
Lord's table has been left prepared for any who may not have been able to take of it earlier today. For any who wish to take of it now, uh, ask to raise your hand. Let us pray. Our dear, kind, and gracious Heavenly Father who art in heaven, we come before you now giving thanks for this loaf which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us on the cruel cross that we might have hope. Father, we thank you for this gift and for his willingness to go to the cross. We ask that all who partake of it at this time do so in a manner well pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray. Father, we come before you again, giving thanks for this fruit of the vine, which represents the blood of our Lord and Savior. We ask now that those who partake of it do so in a manner well pleasing in your sight, rightly remembering the blood which is shed for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Anybody wish to lay by in store? Appreciate everyone's presence tonight and hope that the things we've studied this evening can go with us through the week and give us strength and courage to stand for truth and stand for God's word. Anything else we need to announce? Okay, there's a card in the back to sign for, I'm sorry. There will be. <laughs> Give me just a moment to retrieve one <laughs> after our uh, closing uh, prayer uh, song. Uh, we'll have a card to sign for visitors we had this morning. So, anything else? Uh, uh, after our closing song, uh, Alan, would you lead our closing prayer, please? Number 610, let's all be standing. 600 kids. Oh, so God sent his son, make 